Yes, welcome to Kenya USA Times TV. It has been a long time since I made a video about anything diversity visa lottery or immigration to the US. I'm sorry for that. I have been very busy of late traveling across the US. Katika uh, Kaziang, yes. I'm in the military, so most of the time I'm very busy, quite busy. And by the way, Joining the U.S. military will give you, if, if you come to the U.S., if you join the U.S. military, you will be able to travel across the United States and even outside the United States. So that's one of the benefits of the joining U.S. military. So the whole of, for the last two weeks, I've been in New Jersey for some training. So and that's why I've never been posting videos of late. Sabu ya kikazi. So, all the same, I'm well, I'm fine, I'm doing good. I hope you are doing good also. So, today, Nimeonelea Kwamba, I want to talk about how to pay for your green card using USIS LE system. Remember, when you win the University Visa Lottery, uh, that is when you are granted visa at the embassy, you are required to pay for USIS uh, immigration fee, which is about 220 US, US dollars. And it's recommended that you pay as early as possible. And you can pay this while in your own country or while in the US. But most, most of the time, it is recommended that you pay um, way early, meaning that you will be forced to pay even in your while you are still in your own home country. Today I will be facing my how I paid my uh, green card in Kenya. I'm from Kenya by the way. In Kenya and the whole process, the step-by-step -step process I will show you. So welcome. Um green card, first of all, a fee is different from interview fee which is 330 usd us dollars a green card fee is 220 and it's for the production of the green card the real the actual green card you will get when you come to the us so it's very important that you pay uh, let me share with you my screen i want to show you something Yes. Na kama uko na swali, uliza swali for anything even about this how to pay this. Just ask a question. Yes. Cool, 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 cool. Let me sh Yes. I don't know if it's visible. Okay. When you are granted visa, at the embassy, you will be given this white paper and it's titled USIS Immigrant Fee. And with this paper, it will contain your alien registration number, alien number, which will start with letter A and then followed by an O and the rest of the numbers. Uh, subsequently, it will be followed by your DOS, Department of State Case ID, which is the same as case number. And as you can see from my case, it was my case number 2023 AF 1392. That was my case number. You just remove the leading. Okay, they do remove the leading zeros. Yeah, that's the number between AF and the other numbers. So, the two numbers, uh, that's registration number or alien number and the case number are very important in this case when you want to pay for your green card. So you will get this paper and it will say, as a recipient of the immigrant visa from US Department of State, you are required to pay uh, 220 USD to USIS. The USIS immigrant fees covers the cost of USIS, the cost 
USIS in CAS to process, file, and maintain immigrant visa package, as well as produce and issue uh, documents, including a permanent resident card, commonly known as green card. So this money will be used for all those uh, things, issue of documents, filing, immigrant visa package. You remember that there is that yellow envelope. Yes, it will. So the cost will cover the processing of the same and then the production of the actual green card. You must pay uh, this fee using USIS ELIS system. Yes. USIS electronic immigration system after you receive your immigrant visa packet from the Department of State. That's via the embassy. You will not, not this, you will not receive your green card until you have paid immigrant visa fee. Yes. Now, you can pay while in your own country. For my case, I, I paid this uh, while in Kenya. Now, the production of my green uh, card. And it will give time the system to process your case. I know you can still pay when you are here, but you are just wasting time. So if you pay in your own country, it will lead to um, efficient production of your, or timely production of your green card. It will not delay so much. Yeah. Okay, and there is a website given here. It's this one, go to this, my usis.gov.immigrantv. And I recommend that um, before you do this, try to create an USIS account. Yes, that's what I did. I created an USIS account because through this account, you will be able to track the process of the of your green card production. You will be able to track, you will know what is the stage, what's the status of your green card production. And it will even tell you when it has been made. And through this FTM USIS uh, immigrant account, uh, you will be able to, to update your mailing address. That's where your green card will be mailed. That's very important. I know you can do it at the embassy, at the port of entry, but also you can do it here. To be safe, do it here. This applies to those people uh, who want to change post address where the green card will be mailed to. So if you want to do that, you can do this here, and then you also do it at the port of entry or at the embassy. Okay, what do you require? Enter your A number which is the LA number, and the DOS, Department of State Case ID number, found at the top of this um, piece of paper, which is this one, LA number is this one. And this LA number, by the way, will be your lifelong number until now you transition to being a US citizen. Even that, with that, you will still maintain this number in some way in the systems. Uh, yeah, in some way in the system, this number will be there. However, the case number, after the end of this, the, your case number will no longer be needed for anything. So, and then let me show you. Let's say you've not been given this white piece of paper. I know it's common for for the consular officer to forget to give you this white paper. But if you've not been given, don't worry. Don't worry about that. Angalia, your passport. Check your passport. Check uh, the place where they impose the visa. On this page, on your passport, you see, you'll see IV immigrant visa case number, which is your case number. For my case, 2023 AF 1392 01. Then you will need this number, but without 01. You see? Don't include 01. Okay. Additionally, 
there is the registration number or the alien number, which is this one I've covered mine for security reasons. So this same same number you will use it in while paying uh, your green card fee. I'll show you how to do that where these numbers, these two numbers will be needed. And then of course your get your name, blah blah blah, and so forth. Yes, and remember this visa has an expir expiration date. So be careful when you are granted this visa. Don't delay. Don't exceed the expiration date given. For my case, it was uh, 20th March 2023. So it means that you have to be in the US uh, before this date expires. Yes, don't wait until the last minute and then you you want to schedule for flights you never know you may not get the right flight so always take note of this you can come a month earlier or two months early it doesn't matter as long as you don't delay or, or else your visa will expire remember this is just the entry visa this is not the actual green card this is just the entry fee, immigrant visa which acts as the entry visa. And it says what? Upon endorsement serves as temporary I-551, which is permanent residence, for one year. It acts as a green card for one year while in the US. However, if you fail to obey this rule, IV expiration date, you will not go to the US. Yes. So even though it will act while you are still in the US, it will act uh, as a green card before you receive your actual green card. Be mindful of this um, expiration date. You must enter US before this date. Okay. Then after payment, what you've paid now, you will receive an email from this website and it will say your payment has been submitted to bay.gov and details are below application name blah 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 transaction type you can use credit card or debit card and for your information in most developing countries such as kenya we do, most of the time we don't have credit cards we have debit cards so don't worry you will just use your bank debit card or atm card and remember those the numbers on your um, debit card will be very important and then transaction and debt and don't worry your money could be in kenya shillings but the bank will, will uh, exchange the money into usd of course there's some processing fees there but don't worry it, See your last my queen dollars at the no the bank will do that for my case i used equity bank in kenya i had some money there no it was not equity it was kcb sorry for that i used kcb bank and and it was very smooth because i put to me uh, the billing address here in general to me uh, who create that account in kcb whatever and then the correct details of the of the card the numbers and the name on the card and so forth and that is it i want to show you now the website itself mm. yes i will show you Yes, one minute. Cool. This is the website. <laughs> yes, it, it's and I recommend that you create. Um, as you can see here, there is a place for signing in, meaning that at least you have to create the USIS account. Uh, obviously, they may require your passport number your case number, your um, 
LA number or registration number. Remember, LA number is the same as the registration number. And it, it can be found on your visa if you have no white paper. Okay. It says what? If you are a migrant to the United States as a lawful permanent resident, you must pay the USIS the migrant fee online unless you meet the following. We, we don't have to read that. Just click this. Yes, it says USIS immigrant V. Before you start eligibility, if you are immigrating to the United States as a lawful permanent resident, that green card holder, you must pay USIS immigrant fee online. Okay. USIS use this to process your immigrant visa, package, produce your mm -hmm, whatever. Those details. You may also pay. Okay, check this. You may also pay the fee after you arrive in the US. If you arrive in the US and haven't paid the fee, the USIS immigrant fee, USIS will send you a payment notice with instruction on paying your fee. It's, it's a same. But uh, to be safe, just pay while you are still in your own country. Unless, of course, you don't have enough money to do that, then you can come to the US, work, or borrow money, or work. Um, some few months and then you will have to pay. But again, there is a trick here. Coming here to the US, it doesn't mean that you will come and get employment directly. No. So because you'll have to wait for your social security, as I said, which may take some weeks. Mine took uh, two weeks. But for some people, I've seen image poor almost a month. So that's why I advise people, if it's possible, especially for the principal applicant, the one when you are not going to na work for the benefit of others, or yes, I'm a, if you have a spouse, yes, make sure you pay. For the others, you can come and pay in the US. But I recommend that you pay everything in, in your own country. Yes. You do not have to pay USIS immigrant for uh, this doesn't apply for us. Documents you may need USIS immigrant fee and at the time of your interview at the M US embassy or consulate, the Department of State in the field officer should have given you a USIS immigrant fee handout. However, in some cases, the white that's the white paper I was showing you. However, it's, in some cases, they may not um, give you, they may forget to give you. In this case, you don't have to worry. You just come to this website, look for your, um, obviously your alien number is in your passport and you just have to know the format of doing that. And then the, your case number, you know your case number, you will meet the leading zeros and then they say what? This document mm -hmm, on how to pay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Click next. Department of Homeland Security Private Privacy Notice. You click continue. You can see it clearly. Yes, let me try to. Yeah, I think it's visible. Your A number or the alien number or the registration number, the same thing, and the Department of State case number are both required and can be found in your visa packet. Visa packet, that's the yellow envelope, or your passport. Normally it's found in your passport, or now the handouts you are given by the embassy, the white piece of paper. The first one is alien number, it starts with A, or it's sometimes it's called registration number. Then DOS case ID, which is the case number. Alien number, a number that is your num your A number is the, is the letter A followed by seven 
eight or nine numbers. On a on a FISA stamp, your a your a number is identified as registration number. That's what I was saying. Yeah, it's the same thing as the registration number. If your a number is fewer than nine digits, the system will automatically add zero. If it's less than nine digits, after the a and before the before the first digit, so that there is a total of nine digits. For example, um, in my case, A, and then there is a zero, and then the other numbers. You see? So that's how you should you should be able to write. If your alien number is less than register registration number is less than uh, nine, the system will add zero. However, if you have the piece of paper. Uh, given by the embassy, just put the way that alien number is. Or you can use your passport. Let's see. Yeah, passport in a card. It's you st it starts with automatically A, and then you input um, for the passport, registration number doesn't have O. Most of the time it doesn't start with the first zero so in your um, in here you will start with o and then the registration numbers given here the rest of the registration numbers given there yes that's if you don't have the white paper okay your dos case id is three letters followed by nine or ten numbers for example that one if you are a dv diversity visa immigrant your dos will be r4 numbers that's amazing followed by two letters five more numbers and so forth for example in my case 2023 it starts with the year financial year 2023 af 1392. This 01, you don't have to include it here. Don't include the, the additional um, 01. No, don't include it. Just write the case number as it should be. But remember, remove the, the leading zeros in between the AF and the other numbers. For some people, it can be four numbers. For some people, it can be three numbers, depending on your the number of your case number. For my case, I think I had four zeros. Yes, four zeros between AF and AE, and AE one. We look at four zeros. So don't worry. What's next? And then case number you input, and then you click next obviously for my case it will not allow me to click next because let's see yes because it will require or it will prompt me to input my alien number which is a private number i may not even share it here case number i don't mind about that you all know it was 1392 and then interestingly with this website yes Something very interesting with this website, very important, you can benefit from this. You can use this website to confirm your US mailing address to receive your green card. Very important. That's what I did, actually. Yes, confirm your US mailing address to receive your green card. This apply um, for people who initially used a different address in while submitting the DS-260. But the person who gave them um, the documents, they have a bit of support. I-134, then 40 forms, IRS transcripts, was a different person. And that person may not be willing to... Okay. The original address, that original address, that person may not be willing to host you. The person willing to host you is this one who has given you the documents. 
So you will need to update your mailing address where your green card will, and social security will be sent. And one of the ways, Ni, using this USIS website. Yes. This is what I did. The person whose address I used in the DS260 was a different person from the person who gave me the documents and hosted me. So I had to update uh, my mailing address. Uh, similarly, I did that uh, at the port of entry. I made sure that the address is the right one. So you can do this at the embassy, port of entry, even with this website. You can also do it at this website. Write the address just as, as it is. That way, your green card will not be made to the wrong, to the wrong what? To the wrong address. Yes. So if you do this, ad, that's why I'm saying you have to do this while in Kenya. Do this early. Write the right um, address, and then that will be good for you. I remember there is somebody who um, who wanted to update the his host address. Yes, he updated, but it was too late. It was too late because he was updating it while in the US. So his green card was sent to the wrong, what? To the wrong, um, to the wrong mailing address. Yes. Though even, he eventually got it, but it was, it took so many months to get it. So that is guys, that's how to do it. That's how to pay your, green card using USIS LE system. And take note, you can use your debit card or ATM card. Those numbers in front of your ATM card, input them. There will be a place where they will prompt you to do that. And then your name as it is on the ATM card or debit card. And that is it. And make sure you have money in your account. For my case, I used KCP. I had an account with KCP, even with equity, but I chose KCP um, because I think the rates by that time was good. So that's it. That's it, guys. God bless you so much as you think about paying your USIS um, immigrant fee. As you can see for my case, we were four people. I paid 880 USD. So you need to be happy, but it's a lot of money. Now, payment yangu ukiona bizuri. And in November 2nd, 2022, just before I came to the US. Remember, I landed in the US December 12, 2022. So a month before the US, Nilisha Lipa Green Guard Yang, Naika Puja on time. Yes, especially green card. Green card, you have to pay. Your social security, whatever, you don't have to pay. In Akuja, automatically. And you don't have to apply while you are in the US. I've seen some people trying to apply again uh, the social security number. No, you don't have to apply. You had already applied while submitting the DS-260. There is that section whereby they do ask you if you would like to have as a SSN or a social security number. And that is it, guys. God bless you so much. I, I have so many things to share with you. Just put it on the comment section. Tell me what to cover and so forth. Please give a like to this video. Share it in your groups. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.